Today, we're taking a deep dive into one of the oldest encryption techniques, the Caesar cipher. The Caesar cipher was actually used effectively for a long time. It's kind of amazing how something so simple can still be so powerful. So consider this your code-breaking crash course. We'll be learning two methods, the visual mapping table, and for those who like a little math, a formula method. Let's start with that mapping table, the visual approach. Okay, so imagine two alphabets lined up. The first one is just your regular ABCs. The second one, though, is shifted over a certain number of places. That's the key to the cipher. Ah, so it's like those decoder rings, but laid out flat. Exactly. And the best part, no complicated calculations. Once you've got the table set up, you're good to go. Just look up the letters and match them. So the first encrypted letter is L. And if you locate L on the bottom row of your mapping table, mm -hmm. you'll see that it lines up with the letter H on the top row. Perfect. And that, my friend, is your first decoded letter. Now, here's a cool trick. Okay. Notice that M comes right after L in the alphabet. Right. Since we already know that L decodes to H. Yeah. But... So M must become I. That's so much faster. Way faster. This is like a little mental shortcut. Yeah. And can save you precious seconds during those competitions. All right. So let's keep going. Okay. Um, Next up, we have uh, E, mm -hmm. which, according to our table, maps to A. Okay. After that, we have G. Mm -hmm. Remembering our shortcut, G is two letters after E. Right. And we know E decodes to A. Yeah. So G must decode to C. Makes sense. Okay. And then we come to T, which, using our table, yeah. we see maps to P. You're getting the hang of it. I am. It's like a puzzle, isn't it? Yeah, it is. The more you decode, the easier it becomes to, like, predict the plain text. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right, now we've got C, which decodes to Y. Okay. Followed by P, which decodes to L. Uh-huh. Then we have an R. Yep. Um, ap applying our handy shortcut, R comes right after P. Right. Which decodes to L. Mm -hmm. So R must decode to N. You're yeah. using the table less yeah. and relying more on, like, your understanding of the pattern. I think so. That's great. Um, okay, moving along, we have X which maps back to T. Okay. Next is W, which we can decode to S because it's one letter before X, which decodes to T. And that's the beauty of practice. You yeah. know, it becomes almost intuitive. Yeah. You start to see those relationships and you can just decode with like speed and accuracy. Okay. Next we have uh, I, which our trusty table tells us maps to E. All right. And finally we end with H, mm -hmm. which we can quickly decode to D because it comes right before I, which maps to E. So there you have it. See, it's all about making those connections, you mm -hmm. know, right. whether it's through like visual mapping or those clever little shortcuts. Yeah. Okay. Let's just take a moment to like recap the mapping table strength. Okay. Um, you know, you can set it up quickly at the beginning of your decoding session. Mm -hmm. It's visually intuitive, so it's easy to grasp. Yeah. And it eliminates the need for those repeated calculations. Right. Couldn't have said it better myself. All right. Are you ready to explore the math behind Caesar ciphers? Absolutely. Math can be a powerful tool in code breaking. For this method, we'll be using a really straightforward formula. Okay. Encrypted minus shift equals plain. Mm -hmm. And don't forget that the Code Busters exam provides a really handy table oh, yeah. that assigns numerical values to each letter of the alphabet. Mm -hmm. You don't have to memorize anything. It's right there in front of you to use. So how does this tie in with the affine cipher? I've heard that's more complex. It is, but that's what's cool. The Caesar cipher is like a stepping stone to the affine cipher. The affine formula is A inverse, prime is Y minus B is equals X. Now, the neat thing is, in a Caesar cipher, that A inverse is always one, and B is simply the shift amount. So if you learn the affine formula, you're basically learning two ciphers at once. So it's like the Caesar cipher is training wheels for the affine cipher. I like that. Can we try an example with that formula? Absolutely. Let's decode a Socrates quote this time. All right, shift of eight. So our trusty reference table tells us E is the number four. Subtract the shift, which is eight, and we get negative four. Hold on. Negative. What do we do with that? Since we're working with the alphabet, think of it like a circle. To get back to our letter values, we just add 26 to that negative result. So negative four plus 26 equals 22. Got it. And 22, looking at our table again, gives us the letter W. So we're starting our decoded message with W. What about the next letter? Q is the number 16. 16 minus 8, our shift gives us 8. No need to add 26 here. We're within our range of letter values. And number 8, if I remember correctly, is I. So now we have WI. No, oh, okay, this formula is starting to click. It's pretty neat, isn't it? For the third letter, A, that's represented by the number 0. 0 minus 8. That puts us back at negative 8. Add 26, and that gives us 18, which is S. 
Perfect. So far we have W-I-S. Okay, feeling like a code breaker now. So I'm guessing if we keep going with the formula, we'll eventually get the full quote. Exactly. And that quote, by the way, is wisdom begins in wonder. Now that's a quote worth decoding. Both the mapping table and this formula, they work really well. But what happens when we don't know the shift? Like if we get a message and we're just totally in the dark, how do we even start decoding that? Now that's where it gets a little trickier, but way more exciting. So no easy formula this time. Not exactly. But there are some things we can look for, and it's all about patterns. You look for common letter combinations, short words, anything that stands out. Like single letter words are usually A or I in English. And once you've cracked a few letters, you can often use those to figure out what the shift must be. So it's like detective work. Once you've figured out the shift, you can use either the mapping table or that math formula to decode the rest of the message. That's so cool. It's been a pleasure diving into the world of cryptography with you today. And remember, the real power of cryptography lies not just in the ciphers themselves, but in the cleverness of the people who use them. Keep those minds sharp, stay curious, and until next time, happy decoding.